Thinking in Systems by Danella Meadows is a powerful guide to understanding the interconnectedness of the world, offering tools to solve complex problems and anticipate unintended consequences. We'll cover the whole book in just a few minutes. Chapter 1. The Basics. What is a system? At its core, a system is a set of interconnected elements organized to achieve a specific function or purpose. Think of your body. It's made up of elements like organs and tissues, interconnected through your nervous and circulatory systems, all working together to sustain life. Systems, as Meadows puts it, are more than the sum of their parts. They exhibit behaviors that are dynamic, goal-seeking, and often capable of self-preservation and evolution. Here's an important distinction. Just knowing the parts doesn't mean you understand the whole. Meadows warns us, you think that because you understand one, that you must therefore understand two because one and one make two, but you forget that you must also understand and. This and refers to the relationships and feedback loops that connect the parts. For instance, in a family, the interactions between members create dynamics that are far more complex than any one individual's behavior. Understanding this foundational concept allows us to see systems everywhere. Your workplace, community, and even a city's traffic flow are all systems. So, how can you apply this? First, start by recognizing the systems in your life and analyzing their components and purposes. Then, shift your focus to the interconnections rather than just the individual parts. Finally, consider feedback loops and long-term impacts when solving problems. By embracing systems thinking, you'll gain a clear perspective on how to create sustainable solutions. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Chapter 2. A Brief Visit to the System Zoo Now that we know what systems are, let's explore some examples in what Meadows calls the System Zoo. Systems range from the simple, like a household thermostat, to the incredibly complex, like an entire economy. Despite their differences, they all operate on the same principles, particularly feedback loops. Feedback loops are the mechanisms that keep systems running. Balancing loops stabilize them, while reinforcing loops amplify growth or decline. As Meadows says, feedback loops are at the heart of the dynamics of all systems. Let's look at a simple example a thermostat. When the room temperature drops below a set point, the thermostat triggers the heater to warm it up. Once the desired temperature is reached, the system balances itself by turning the heater off. In contrast, a reinforcing loop can be seen in population growth. More births lead to more people, which leads to even more births, creating exponential growth. Understanding these dynamics is essential because they apply everywhere. For instance, in team dynamics, reinforcing loops might create a culture of innovation or negativity if not managed well. To engage with systems like these, try identifying feedback loops in your daily life. Observe how your morning routines, work habits, or community initiatives are influenced by these loops. Use simple models to experiment with changes, and you'll start predicting and influencing system behavior effectively. Chapter 3 why systems work so well. Let's start by looking at why systems are often so effective. Systems have an incredible ability to keep themselves going, and this resilience comes largely from their feedback loops and interconnections. For example, think about ecosystems. Even when faced with disruptions like storms or wildfires, they find ways to bounce back. Meadows highlights this when she says, a system generally goes on being itself, changing only slowly, if at all, even with complete substitution of its elements. This resilience is a hallmark of well-functioning systems. But what really makes systems extraordinary is their ability to self-organize. This means that systems can adapt and reconfigure themselves without any external intervention. Imagine a neighborhood organizing cleanup efforts after a natural disaster. It's a powerful example of a community self-organizing to solve a problem. As Meadows puts it, self-organization is a process that produces a system's structure and behavior without explicit intervention. This adaptability is what allows systems to thrive in dynamic and ever-changing environments. Another fascinating feature is synergy. 
This is when the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts. Think about a sports team. Individually, the players have unique skills. But when they work together, the team can accomplish much more than any one player alone. These emergent properties, as they're called, are what makes systems more powerful than their individual components. So, how do we apply these insights? First, foster adaptability in your teams or organizations by encouraging self-organizing behaviors. Create environments where individuals and groups can take initiative and respond to challenges dynamically. Second, study the systems you depend on, whether it's your workplace, a supply chain, or even a family dynamic, and identify the feedback loops that keep them resilient. Finally, seek out synergies in your projects or relationships. Ask yourself, how can the collaboration of different elements lead to outcomes far greater than the sum of their parts? Chapter 4. Why Systems Surprise Us Now, even though systems are resilient and adaptable, they often behave in ways that surprise us. Systems can be unpredictable, and this stems from three main factors. Delays, non-linearities, and interdependencies. Meadows reminds us that we live in a linear world in a non-linear reality. This means we often expect straightforward cause and effect relationships, but in reality, systems are much more complex. Delays, for instance, are a common source of surprises. Picture a thermostat that's slow to respond to temperature changes. It might overshoot the target and make the room uncomfortably hot or cold. Similarly, in social systems, Delays in policy changes can lead to unexpected outcomes, like economic downturns lingering longer than anticipated. Nonlinear responses add another layer of complexity. Small changes in one part of a system can lead to disproportionately large effects elsewhere. For example, introducing a single invasive species into an ecosystem can dramatically alter the entire food chain. Finally, Interdependencies between parts of a system mean that changes in one area can ripple through others in ways that are hard to predict. Our mental models, how we think about systems, are often too simplistic to account for these dynamics. Meadows writes, You can't predict the exact behavior of a system, but you can understand the general patterns. This is why it's essential to move beyond oversimplified approaches and embrace the complexity of systems. So, what can we do to handle this unpredictability? First, resist the urge to oversimplify problems. Take time to consider broader interdependencies and the potential for delays in outcomes. Second, practice patience. Many systems like personal habits or organizational changes require time to show results. Lastly, make it a habit to regularly update your mental models. As you gather more information, refine your understanding of how a system operates and adjust your approach accordingly. Chapter 5. System Traps and Opportunities Every system, no matter how well designed, is vulnerable to traps. These traps occur when systems behave in ways that undermine their purpose or goals. Meadows identifies some common traps, such as policy resistance, the drift to low performance, and the tragedy of the commons. For example, Policy resistance happens when various stakeholders in a system work against each other's efforts, leading to stagnation or chaos. Imagine a city's efforts to reduce traffic congestion being undermined by citizens who refuse to use public transportation. As Meadows points out, the trap is often invisible until it is too late. One of the most striking traps is the tragedy of the commons, where shared resources are overused because individuals prioritize their short-term needs over long-term sustainability. This can happen in fisheries, forests, or even workplace dynamics when everyone tries to maximize their personal gain. However, as Meadows reminds us, every system problem can also be an opportunity for creativity and intervention. The same dynamics that create traps can also be leveraged to design better systems. So how do we avoid or escape these traps? First, identify patterns of dysfunction in your systems, whether at work, in your community, or even in your personal life. 
trace these patterns back to their structural causes, such as poorly aligned incentives or lack of communication. Second, foster transparency and accountability. When stakeholders understand the system and trust one another, collaboration becomes possible. Finally, use tools like feedback redesign or incentive alignment to shift behaviors and avoid pitfalls like the tragedy of the commons. The lesson here is that every trap is also an opportunity to reimagine and improve the system. Chapter 6. Leverage Points. Places to intervene in a system. Once we understand the challenges within a system, the next step is figuring out where to intervene for the greatest impact. Meadows introduces the concept of leverage points, specific areas within a system where small changes can create big results. She famously quotes Archimedes, give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. But not all leverage points are created equal. Some, like adjusting parameters, e.g. turning a dial or tweaking a setting, yield only limited results. Others, like changing the system's goals or rules, can lead to transformative change. For example, in an education system, adjusting the student-to-teacher ratio might improve learning outcomes slightly, but changing the overall goal from test scores to critical thinking could fundamentally transform the system. Meadows emphasizes that the most powerful leverage points often involve altering the mindset or paradigm that underpins the system. These shifts are challenging but can create lasting change. So how can we apply this? Start by focusing your efforts on high leverage changes, those that go beyond surface adjustments to address deeper structures like goals, feedback loops, or paradigms. Use data and feedback to identify areas where interventions can have the most substantial impact. Finally, be patient and persistent. System changes, especially at high leverage points, often take time to manifest, but their long-term benefits are worth the effort. Understanding where and how to act is the key to effective system management. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Chapter 7. Living in a World of Systems Finally, Meadows brings us to the reality that we live in a world of interconnected systems. Navigating this complexity requires a mindset of flexibility, humility, and a willingness to learn. The goal is not to control systems, because that's impossible, but to align with their natural tendencies and support their resilience. Meadows beautifully captures this by saying, we can't control systems or figure them out entirely, but we can dance with them. Living successfully in a world of systems demands more than intellect. It requires wisdom. For instance, consider global challenges like climate change or economic inequality. These are deeply systemic issues with no simple solutions. To engage effectively, we must embrace uncertainty, remain open to feedback, and collaborate across boundaries. It's about harmonizing with the system, not fighting against it. What can we take away from this? First, embrace uncertainty and approach systems with a learning mindset. Be prepared to adapt as systems evolve. Second, strengthen interconnections and shared goals within your community or organization to build resilience. Finally, practice mindfulness and remain open to feedback from the systems you interact with. By doing so, you'll not only navigate complexity more effectively, but also contribute positively to the systems you are part of.